Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to my channel. I'm in a different location yet again and I'm hoping it does not start pouring on me because the sky is looking kind of crazy right now. But I really wanted to do this video today just kind of comparing two bikes. One that is a very budget friendly mountain bike and then one that is about double the price of this budget bike right here. I know I've received some comments from you guys talking about how you're brand new to mountain biking and I thought this might be really helpful especially if you're on the market for a new mountain bike trying to figure out which one is the best for you to go with because it's a tough decision. There's so many bikes out there and it's tough to try to figure out which one's right for you. Before I dive into these bikes, first I just want to ask the question that you should ask yourself first and that is what types of trails are you wanting to ride? And you might not have the answer because you're like I've never mountain biked before, I just want to get on a bike. I have no idea what I want to do and that's okay too. But it's good to kind of have some idea of the style trail that you're wanting to ride. You could be wanting to do more cross country style riding where it's just long rides, climbs, or you could be on the other side of the spectrum wanting to do more aggressive terrain and downhill and things like that. So it's good to kind of have an idea of what you're wanting. So after you figure out that, the next thing is to make sure you have a bike that you can actually grow with. I know for my first mountain bike that I got, I had the Diamondback Sorento and that was just never a good bike for me. It just wasn't the right bike for what I was wanting to do, which made me really quickly outgrow it because it was a very short travel bike and it was a cross country bike and I don't do cross country. So it just wasn't a good fit for me. So that's why it's important to kind of know the style trails that you're wanting to do. All right, so without further ado, let's just go ahead and get into these two bikes. I'm going to keep this very top line. I'm not going to get into crazy specs or anything like that because more than likely, if you're watching this for the first time and you know nothing about mountain biking, you're probably going to be like, why? Why does that matter? This and that. So we're just going to kind of go over top line specs with these two bikes and why there's such a gap in the prices on these two. So I thought we would do this a little bit differently and I would just bring you guys over here to the bike to show you everything. So this is my mom's bike. If you guys have watched some of my previous videos and you probably have seen my mom's bike so like I mentioned she has a Diamondback Access XE and I'm just gonna kind of quickly go over some things that I like about this bike that I don't like about this bike like I said I'm not going to get too spec heavy on this because a lot of you watching if you are new to mountain biking you just really want to know what the main differences are so I'm gonna show you so this bike I believe we got it from Dick Sporting Goods and we paid around $400 give or take for it and some of the things that I really don't like, I don't want to say really don't like about it, but don't care for it. One being the three by right here. I just feel like a lot of people starting out, there's just more things to go wrong with a three by. I have only had one three by and I wasn't a fan of it. It's just one, it's a lot more gear range than I would ever use. So it adds on a little bit of extra weight. Something I just don't need, and if I have to fix it, it's a lot harder to fix, in my opinion, than a 2x8, which is what I currently have. Another thing is, if you do not know how to fix your own derailleur, I highly recommend going on YouTube, watching a video on how to fix that, because more chances than not, you're going to have a situation at some point riding where you're going to have to fix that, or you're going to be hiking a bike. So that definitely happened to me one time, and luckily I was able to realign everything and get it fixed where I could continue because I was stuck, I think at like fourth gear and up. It was really bad, it wasn't a good situation. I was in the middle of nowhere, miles away from my car. So it was a problem, so just something to note. So we actually recently upgraded the grips on here. These are the Ergon GA3s, highly recommend these. I have a video on them, I'll link down below. Um, if you have a lot of wrist problems or you know, tingly sensation in your hands, these are the way to go. So originally this bike didn't have locking grips, which that's the way to go because if you ever need to take off, you know, shifters and things like that, it's just a nightmare to try to take off the grips. They're, they don't want to come off. It's annoying, whereas locking grips, you can easily just unscrew them and you don't have to worry about it. Also has a XCT SR Sun Tour fork right here, 100 millimeters of travel. Um, I personally, would like to have something that's at least like 120 but 100 will get you by it's fine but you're just not going to be able to do anything super severe so that's nice to have that these are also 27 and a half inch tires people have a preference on this they're either 27 and a half or 29er fans it just depends 29ers I know sometimes can feel maybe a little more sluggish because you have larger wheels but also you're able to plow through stuff a lot easier on them but again it's just a preference I think it comes down to with what you like that this is a completely different story on choosing the right saddle for you would not recommend something this large whatsoever because it makes it just harder to maneuver around on the saddle so don't recommend something like that but that's not the video. This bike also has disc brakes. Anyone looking at a bike, a mountain bike, you should always get disc brakes. The stopping power is better. V brakes to me are just not reliable. 
just a lot of things happen with V-brakes. I'm not a fan of V-brakes on a mountain bike. So um, definitely look into disc brakes if you're looking for a mountain bike. So anyways, that is about it for this bike right here. So now we'll kind of just take a look at a bike that is double the price of a budget bike. Why is it more expensive? What all do you get that's different on it? So this is the Trek Marlin 6. I really like this color. Our family friend picked out. The one thing that I really, really, really like, and this is just so little, but I like how this already came with these types of grips, locking grips, which is really nice. Like I mentioned, it's very easy to replace. She also went ahead and replaced her saddle, so I won't talk about this. Didn't come stock with the bike. One thing that I really like about this bike is it has a longer handlebar. You guys know I've talked about this before. I really, really like having a longer handlebar. I feel like you're just a lot more stable on a bike. You feel more secure. It's a little bit longer than my mom's handlebar right here. So this bike right here is actually a two by eight, which again, you guys know I love running a two by eight. I think it's great. You have more than enough gears than you would ever need. And it's just really nice. It shifts great. And there's just a lot less that can kind of go wrong with it. And if something happens, I feel like it's just a little bit easier to fix. Don't get me wrong, it's not fun fixing a derailleur issue, but it's more manageable, I'll say. Here she is just running a SR Suntour X CT30 fork that is a 100 millimeter fork. Thing that I love about this and that I was telling her that she should look for when getting a bike is the ability to lock it out. I love being able to lock it out, so, um, that's a really, really nice feature that this fork has. You're able to lock out the suspension. So this is really useful if you're doing a big climb. You're not using the extra energy where the shock is really working. It's nice to have that so you're pedaling more efficiently. The next thing, I'm like, the next thing. So the next thing that this has, hydraulic brakes on here, which is super, super, super nice. That was one of the big things that I really, really liked about this bike. It's a nice feature to have. You're going to stop really, really quickly with hydraulic brakes. So that was a really nice feature on here. So the tire size on this, they look like 29ers. I think they're 29ers if I'm not mistaken. Much larger tire size. You know, again, it's personal preference, but for someone starting out, could be nice because it's a slightly more forgiving. Having those larger tires, you're able to, like I said, plow through more rough terrain. This is such a small, small detail in this bike, but I just wanted to mention it just because I think it's a nice touch. Um, you have a chain guard right here, which I think is really nice that it automatically comes with. So again, just a really quick recap, what does an $800 bike have that a $400 bike doesn't? And really it's just hydraulic brakes, a slightly nicer gear set, a two by eight, but again, that's kind of preference, and a self-locking fork. So at the end of the day, you just kind of want to weigh it out and see which one would make the most sense to you. Do you need the hydraulic brakes? Do you need a self-locking fork? If you're really looking for something to grow with and not having to upgrade really quickly, I think the Trek is an excellent option for that because you do have a lot of those nice added features like the hydraulic brakes and the self-locking fork. So anyways, let me know in the comments down below which bike would you go with for your first bike, and I will see you guys in the next video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and bye guys.